Okay, today I'm going to show you smart ways of designing primers for your PCR. There are certain times that you are doing a project on your own gene of interest, but at the same time you want to see expression of certain other genes that you saw in, in an article recently. And you're not sure that you, those genes are expressed in your samples, you just want to test it. And, and in case they are not expressed, you don't want to work with those for long. So, so what are the other ways of designing primers? So there are a few smart ways of designing primers. That's what I want to discuss with you today and show you how to do it. And these are the ways that I use it. Okay, so one way to do it is just go to google.com and, and Google it. So here I am in Google and I'm giving a human FOXP3 primers and probes as my search because that's what I want to design. Uh, I want to design and get my own primers for Okay, so once I give a search, I got a uh, lot of uh, articles and advertisements and product advertisements like Thermo Fisher and also I don't want to go there. I just want to find a good, decent article and I find it here. It's a PNAS article. So I click that. <clears throat> so in the articles, when you publish your gene expressions, uh, it's, it's a very good idea to to give your your primers and probe sequences in methods. So in PNAS paper, the method is after the discussion. And so I go and here it is, FOXP3 mRNA expression by real-time PCR. I see human FOXP3 primers forward and reverse and bingo, I got it. I even have a probe sequence. So, so that's one, one way because these are already tested. They have done all the work for you. And, and they are available. So all you have to do is take that sequence and place an order and just use it. And when you're publishing it, cite this article that this is where you got it from. And, uh, and so that's one way of doing it. Okay, so what is another way of uh, getting your, your probes and primers uh, is going to Primer Bank. Primer Bank is by Mass General Hospital. Uh, you can see it's from Harvard Medical School. From Boston and and it's quite a reliable source for your primers here what you do is you come here all you have to do is give your accession number how to get an accession number if you don't know uh, send comments send me some questions regarding that and and I will address those and I will direct you how how to get accession number for your gene of interest so as of now I entered my accession number for Fox P3 and I say submit and this is one site what they do is that all these primers uh, sequences that they display here they have already tested it they also run gels they take an amplicon they also sequence it so you're sure that these primers are going to work see how quickly you got a response here are my forward and reverse primers for my human fox p3 it identifies what gene that is and the length is 19 and 20 basis and here is 62 degrees six and 62.4 degrees of melting temperature and it also gives the location okay so what is the size of my amplicon here the size of the amplicon is 238 basis okay so so you got your primer sequence so but what is the catch here the catch here is in case you're going to do a real-time PCR you don't have a probe sequence so that's a drawback here you only get forward and reverse primer sequences. This is the same case if you look at some other articles in the literature. Although in the previous article of PNAS that I showed, you have forward and reverse primers along with the probe sequence. In this article, which is from Cell Publishing Company, that is a, a very high impact journal. But, uh, but it, in this article, there's no probe sequence. There's only a Fox P3 primers for forward and reverse. Now, what do you do? When something like this happens, what do you do? And you want a probe. Okay, so, so there are ways of getting your own probe sequence. Uh, and and I, will, I will show you how to do that. Okay, so for that, you need to go to another site. It is for BLAST. BLAST NCBI is a global alignment site. Then you go there, you take your sequence. I'm copying the sequence. and I go to BLAST Global Alignment and I put my accession number here, this is the accession number of the gene and I 
paste my sequence and I say align so within a second or two you'll get an alignment so this is your whole fox p3 sequence the cdna sequence and your primer your forward primer starts here at around 716 717 and it goes till here just remember it is cctt here cctt this is where it is ending okay this is where the forward primer is ending so we want to find where the reverse primer starts and then we will have a sequence between the forward and reverse for which we are going to design a probe okay so now now that we have got this we'll say go back and we'll stay here and i'll go here and get my my reverse sequence reverse primer sequence okay but as you know the reverse primer sequence if you enter it straight away it's not going to show you anything because you need a reverse complement sequence for your reverse primer in order to see where it stands on your on your cdna okay so how to get that for that you need to go to another site which is a bioinformatics.org if you go there give a search in google for bioinformatics.org reverse complement and it straight away displays this you don't want you want to remove that and paste your sequence this is the sequence for which you want a reverse complement and you submit it in a second or two you should get your reverse complement sequence and here it is you got it and take that sequence copy it go back to your global alignment paste it there say align here we are and this is where the reverse sequence is aligned and our forward sequence before ended here cctt okay so you have this much of a sequence from here till here to design your probe so all you have to do is take the sequence and design your probe so that way you get your forward reverse primers and also a probe so this is the second way of designing okay so now what is another way of getting your probes and primers the other way of getting probes and primers is just straight away ordering from a commercial vendor i can't take the names of any commercial vendors here but but i can say that there are vendors out there where all you have to do is go to their website and give a, give a search for your gene of interest say that you are looking for primers or you want a combination of primers and probes there are more made to order probes and primers and which which the these vendors they they test their probes and primers before they sell it and and you can order that they fall a bit expensive uh, but uh, but they save so much of your time and energy in case you are not going to use those if you're not sure of using those primers and probes for long it's worth it to buy from a commercial vendor and using it it also but but be very careful because there are 98% of the times what happened to me was these probes and primers have worked but there were there were few times they did not work when i test it i don't see an expression and i, I assume that this gene is not expression expressed in my samples but uh, but i was wrong when i designed my own probes and primers and i tested those genes were very much expressed and highly expressed so basically that probe and primer set did not work and and uh, and which could be misleading so you have to be very sure of what you're working with so that's why i say i stress it again in case you're going to work with your genes of interest as a project for long if your whole thesis is dependent if your whole article and project is dependent on that gene always design your own probes and primers order them that way it is cheaper you're sure how it is working but in case you're not sure you just want to test out some genes you're browsing in your samples what are the other gene expressions that are happening go through these smart ways of designing pcr primers okay thank you very much